<laughs> and we are live. I can see that on this. And Dupree is fixing his lamp. <laughs> Peter? Hey. Yes. Are you here? See, this is cozy. Okay. Welcome, Peter. Welcome, Nikolai. Dupree and Device. Thank you all. Very first Astralis Talks. Um, where we'll be doing a, a Q and A until uh, the clock hits seven, and then you have more work to do. This is in the middle of the EPL uh, tournament that is played online, and uh, mm -hmm. actually we have games going on right now. So uh, if if you want, uh, you can use this as a second uh, monitor and go watch the games, and at least go watch them afterwards. Anyway, <laughs> we're here to <laughs> we're here to uh, to ask Device and the pre some questions uh about the epl especially but also about uh, how things are right now um everyone is is at home as you can probably see on on the webcams and i think we should just uh should just fire away so uh let, let's go is there any way we can see the questions as well or is it just you who's gonna get the question uh, yeah you can go to to the stream yeah i will i will take my ipad and fix yeah, switch tv switch the tv yeah, I'm, I'm just using the app. Give me two seconds. Is it Astralis GG? Yeah, Astralis GG. I found the first question. Are you cold, Dupree? Um, no. Why? You're wearing a hat inside. I think it's because you're wearing a beanie. But... Oh, right. It's because it, my hair looks like not good. Nice. Avoiding any curse words right there. Perfect. Uh, then we had another question here from uh, Homie. Are you enjoying online CS or do you guys want to uh, get back to LAN uh, ASAP? Dupri? Uh, sure. I mean, I think everyone in the team right now feels feels that obviously we wanted to go to, to Malta and said I still play the LAN tournaments um, at another location. But at the same time, we, we feel really lucky that we uh, had the opportunity to actually still uh, do our work and entertain people and Please the sponsors and everything, um, despite this, the crisis that we have right now with the with the coronavirus. So, um, in, in, in that sense, I think every, we are, are very pleased and very happy for the situation. But there is there is quite different from playing on LAN and playing online. So, um, I think everyone is looking forward to go be able to go back and play the tournaments that we, we know that you guys also like to watch. But at the same time, we we have to be really pleased about the situation uh, that we can still play. So, uh, yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, anything to add, device, or are you currently setting up the stream? I'm just fixing the stream and this guy. So uh, <laughs> I think that, uh, as Peter said, everyone wants to play um, on LAN, of course. I think that, as Peter said, we're lucky. We can play online. I think we'll we'll survive. I think it's it's different to play online. It's a different environment. Actually, there's... Um, um, there's a... It was tough playing the first game against NIP, and and I think it might be tough for some of the the favorites because um, CS is just different, and I think a lot of people have already seen that. So I think a lot of upsets will will happen, but yeah, we're just preparing uh, the best we can, and and we'll do our best. All right, great. We actually have a question from uh, David Pax, uh, who's asking, uh, why did you lose to NIP? Did, didn't they play as you expected? Um, I think, uh, I mean, I think when you look back at the game, we had some issues in in terms of how we we approached the game. I don't think um, I don't feel like we felt ready. I think in some ways we were still, um, I don't know, just stuck in the past. I guess I don't think we had actually realized that we were going into playing an official match, and this is like the kind of style of the tournament. So I think we just got off to a really really bad start, and and obviously NFP played really really good, but we had issues in terms of people. Um, maybe playing a little bit to lose instead of playing the strict thing that uh, we showed against Scots yesterday. And um, it was something that we addressed after the loss. And I think in hindsight, it was a, it was a good talk we had yesterday. But um, w when you have to go back and look at the game against NIP, I don't think anything's particularly worked for us. We, we had some issues in terms of, of our individual performances. At the, and at the same time, we had some issues in terms of playing together as a team. So, um, yeah, uh, it was good to was address that we played better yesterday, at least. Yeah, you sure did. Uh, we were happy to see that, at least. Um, we have a question from Dee Manse. I simply have to uh, to ask, 
what is it that magic is yelling uh, during your huddle? Uh, oh, right, during the huddle. Uh, so basically what we yell is, uh, well, in Danish, that is one, two, three, victory. And what he's, he's saying is, let's go. Is he using the red or white ones now? Yeah. I'm not sure. I think it's the, I think it's, he turned, usually he said, let's go the white ones because he's supporting the, a Danish football team, uh, which is used, that's their way to, to show their appreciation. And he used to say that, but now he's saying the red ones because the white ones started not working. So now we're going with the red ones. So let's go the red ones, vamos. I think that's what he's saying. Vamos as well. All right. So that's what Matt is yelling after every single huddle. Um, we have one here from Martin, the best 1995. If you could remove one map and get one map back from the past, uh, which maps would that be? Device? Uh, honestly, I would probably... It's tough. I don't really like Vertigo. I think it's a map we're pretty good at it, but um, it's a it's a map that's just it doesn't play that well into pro play. Uh, it's kind of it gets boring to watch as well. It's kind of boring to play. Um, they keep changing it all the time. You don't really know where the map, uh, how it's gonna look in a month, or if they're even gonna keep it after the major and etc. So uh, it just feels kind of off in the in the map pool where you have so many good maps and i think that there are a lot of maps to take in i think tuscan is one of the maps that everyone wants to see uh cpl mill was its first name so i guess that's the map i miss the most from source and 1.6 all right do you have anything to add here dupree um I, you, or? I think tuscan is the map that everyone wants to see but uh it's been it's been undergoing well at least the rumor says there's been gone, undergoing a lot of changes and like ownership of the map and whoever's owning it and, and how you're actually going to bring it into competitive play. And I think that overall, um, I'd, I'd like to see Tuscan back at the same time. I'll see Vertigo is still a map that is very, very weird. And in general, just, I don't know, it just feels like it's not fit for competitive play in some ways. Like it's too small. And the fact that you already have issues also when you look at new with the the sound detail when you have uh, players above you and, and below you, uh, I think that's a massive issue. And since Virgo is, is a map on two levels, it's um, it can be quite a, a hassle. All right. Uh, then we actually have a very interesting uh, question here. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's Bassman11 who is asking, what's your favorite food? A classic, but uh, and uh, not Ace's favorite food, but Devices. Yeah, I, I honestly... I, I like a lot of different food. Um, I actually, I have to choose my favorite restaurant. I have to, uh, it's the Indian one in, in Karavitsa. It's, it's the best <laughs> restaurant in the world. Uh, luckily, we ate there so many times that I'm still missing it now. Um, that's the best food I've had. I don't think Indian food in general is my favorite, but uh, yeah, I like Italian food. I like pizza, pasta. That's really good and, and a good steak. Pizza pasta. Yeah, I'm also on the on the pasta pasta wagon. Yeah, you always talk about uh, spaghetti carbonara, right? I do. Yeah. Oh. Um. Then we have one on Facebook from Abit Berisha, who's asking, "Who is the best player in the world, according to you guys?" Uh, I, uh, no, I think Symbol. I actually think Electronic is up there as well, but I think Symbol is uh, is probably the best right now. Sai Wu didn't start the year that great, but I think he will return. I think he's also one, one of the best. Yeah, I'd say uh, simple as well right now. It's been for a while. But I actually, I think Electronic gets a, a little bit too little credit. He's a really, 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 really good player. Probably the best rifle player in the world, right? In my yeah. opinion. Yes. All right, then we have a, a question for Device from Sub Subaya. Subaya? Sylvester? Uh, if you weren't the primary author for Astralis, who would be? Uh, yeah, he's pointing at himself right now. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 honestly, yeah, Peter is probably uh, would is the best raw talented author. I think actually Sipix could be an author because he <laughs> you changed uh, your mind since last time. <laughs> <laughs> with how the how the meta uh, is right now, uh, you need a consistent uh, passive so to say orbit that creates space i think civics is quite good at that but 
But I, honestly, everyone in our team could probably uh, play the sniper. I think it's it's one of the easiest, if not the easiest, roles in the game. Uh, you just have to be consistent and and uh, innovative. All right. And um, so AB Peter stands. Uh, we got a question from Brolex DK. What is your favorite skin? <laughs> You want to hear a funny story? I can tell you a really funny story. This this is probably it happened yesterday. Okay. I bought a new knife, uh, a butterfly ruby knife. It's pretty expensive, uh, but I traded and bought it. I was gonna transfer eleven thousand Danish kroners to one of my friends, and my mother is handling my Danish uh, bank account, so she transferred money and she transferred one hundred and ten thousand Danish kroners to him. <laughs> so. So that was okay. a little bit of an issue. Of course, he just he told me and he transferred it back and and fixed it. But that was a kind of a oopsie, and, and that's, that's my favorite thing. Money, and that was a great. Uh, yeah, that's true. Job. Actually, that that would have saved me the hassle. And if he was a scammer, yeah. he could have uh, taken all my money. Yeah, so, exactly. so uh, <laughs> money. That's true. Peter, I didn't do you have a that. favorite skin? Um, uh, my pink gloves, I guess. Pink gloves. All right. I don't know That's what easy. they call. What? Uh, the sport gloves, vice. Yeah, they do. They're nice. A skin connoisseur, devices. Um, who is the best Danish player aside from you guys? Able asks. Uh, it's a good question. I think there is um, a few players out there for grabs. I mean, like Velde from from OG is obviously out there being one of the better players in Denmark. You have a lot of talent going in. Um, you have a lot of talents from the guys in Mad Lions. And obviously there's also players in Copenhagen Flames that are starting, starting to, to prove themselves. So uh, I think it's kind of hard to like debate who's like the best player out of those guys. But there's like a bunch, like maybe between five and ten players that can actually, uh, I think that can actually uh, go very far um, in this game once we decide that we don't want to play anymore. Nice, that's good for Danish Counter-Strike. Um, multiple people are asking about the differences between playing online and on LAN. Uh, I'm sure you've had this question a number of times, uh, but it's pretty relevant in, in these times. What? Oh, yeah, I didn't pay attention. The differences between online and LAN. I think one of the biggest, honestly, the biggest differences is that when you're playing on LAN, you can look to your left, you can look to your right, you will see your teammates. Uh, often when miscommunication happens, uh, uh, online there is no facial expression you don't know um, like uh, when you are speaking with people uh, you have to be aware of the only thing that your teammates understand right now is what they hear uh, so you can't be frustrated there's like there's no way you can um, communicate badly um, I think and then there's obviously the PC the latency um, um the setup at home compared to land is it is it the same not always the same uh, a lot of people are probably more comfortable at home because they they play mostly at home right uh, yeah. whereas we travel to a lot of tournaments and we are kind of used to seeing each other when we are playing the official games and and using uh, that type of like what do you say like um body language and so to say to understand what's going on in each other's head uh, in in frustrating times all right, that was actually a really good answer. I don't think many people think of this perspective. Peter, See. do you uh, have anything to add? Or are you I totally agree with my teammate. Cool. Um, and then to follow up, are you guys gathered in Copenhagen uh, or are you at home? Right now we are at home. So I'm in Copenhagen and devices in Stockholm and the rest of the guys is also at home. And uh, we have decided not to meet up at the office due to the, the ongoing Issue coronavirus. coronavirus. So uh, we are at home, isolated, and not seeing anyone. So we're playing computer games all the time. All right. Uh, and then we have a question from uh, Bergwachstraße. Bergwachstraße. Steiner. Steiner. <laughs> Steiner. <laughs> How old is your dog device? Uh, it's half a year. So he's, uh, he's um, a guy that likes to test his limits right now. So he always. Sometimes he is uh, really stubborn. It's actually the first dog I've had that is really stubborn. He tries to outsmart me a lot of times. Um, so, uh, does he succeed or no? 
Actually, sometimes he does, but then I know the next time that how he, he wants to try to outsmart me. Sometimes I underestimate him, uh, and sometimes he can get really annoying because I know the only reason why he isn't listening is because he's stubborn and trying to test his limits, right? All right. Uh, then we have one from Frederick2802. Uh, I think that's his birthday, must be. Uh, you two guys, along with Sip, is the longest stand. What is uh, it's the longest standing trio in Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Can you imagine one day not playing together? I mean, eventually it will happen. I don't think we can can run away from that, but I think there might be a, a different um, like approach to it. I, it could either be that one of us decides not, it, it could be myself that decides not to play anymore. It could be one of the other guys. It could be uh, internal issues that might uh, eventually happen. Uh, not that I think it will, but that uh, see us having to uh, make changes to the roster, which I don't think is going to happen either. But uh, but then obviously also if we decide to retire at the same time because we don't feel like there's there's like more opportunities for us, or we, or we lose like the feeling of of playing. But uh, I I've, I've gone with the thoughts of um, whenever I feel like it's time for me to stop playing. I do believe in some way that Astral is going to be. The final team I'm on. I don't think I'm gonna be. If I would end up not getting uh, my spot on the team, or if I would end up not deciding to play uh, with these guys, I don't think I would fit into any other team simply because the way we've been working for so many years, I think it would be hard for me to to go in and go into another team. So I think Astralis will uh, will be my last team. No, oh. very good question. Oh, answer as well. Um, we get a lot of questions in, trying to get through as many as possible, but obviously we won't make them all. So uh, we'll be back for more of these shows in, in the future, uh, no doubt. Um, we got one from Hype CS. What will you do when you eventually stop playing? Do you have like an education to, uh, to fall back on or are you looking to go into coaching or something entirely different? I think for 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 a lot of uh, I mean like that's a, like a very individual question and I think that uh, that Debbie might have another reply than I do but obviously there is a there's ch there's a really good chance that I I will still stay in esports in, in some way I don't think the coaching role would be a thing that would fit me um, so I don't think that's that's the, the approach I would take there's definitely other things I could do um, so I think that's the approach I would take and if it's not going to be in esports then um, I'm not really sure I think I would maybe take some time off figuring out what I wanted to do. All right. And device? What we yeah, um, it's a question we get a lot, actually, and it's not something I I really think about. One thing I, I, I'd i like to do, but I think it's, uh, it's, it's going to be tough, um, is maybe uh, study to become a sports psychologist. I think it's pretty cool, the work they do, but honestly, I'm not really thinking too much about it. I'm, I'm 24, and I think I have a lot of years to, um, in me. Um, and I think a lot of opportunities will arise when you when you quit. So it's not something I plan for. Uh, honestly, I, we work more on a day to day basis. Uh, but but yeah, um, sports psychologist is definitely like a dream job. Looking into like when I'm in the forties or something like that. But it also requires a long education that is a uh, is is hard to do after so many years of being in an industry and getting paid, etc. Uh, and then we have uh, a comment from Panama Joe, also known as Steen. You should work in communications, Peter. Steen, is that Steen from the office? Yeah. Uh, sure. Just hit me <laughs> up, Steen. I'll, I'll be your, also, I'll be your left hand. Right. <laughs> I just revealed the secret identity. Not Panama not Joe. Fine, yeah. But uh, yeah. anyway, um, we got two uh, in-game related questions. Uh, first one's for Dupree. Any tips on entry fragging? Uh, yeah, sure. It's a question that uh, obviously I've got a lot throughout the years, but uh, interfragging is is mainly about obviously having really great reactions, but also having a feeling of of how your enemy is going to be positioned in in different scenarios. Uh, that being, if you go in as a first guy on an execute, you uh, need to keep in mind that what type of position is just going to be flashbang, what type of position is going to be smoked off. So once you go in, you have to prioritize looking left and maybe not right because you know that this area is supposedly a bit smoked off. So it's about making um, a priority list of where you want to be looking. So you want to go in and you want to and look first left and you want to look right and you want to go like it's all about uh, knowing the patterns and knowing where your teammates will flashbang and, and where you will have smokes. Um, so 
then at the same time, also if you go into a situation where it's uh, it could be a three versus three situation, and um, and you you have to have this feeling of the rotations and what type of position would my enemy pick now because he needs to cover maybe more than one position, so he needs to be able to see both uh, openings to the bomb side. And uh, from there on, it's all about hitting your shot and like being very accurate and and being fast in reactions uh, is also uh, a really really important thing. All right, and uh, I actually got a follow up question. Uh, you cannot pick yourself. Uh, if you were to recommend, let's say, two other players to watch when you want to get better at entry fragging, pro players, who would they be? I think the the, the overall role of entry fragging has changed a lot since. Uh, well, obviously, the, the meta of the creek has definitely changed it. So, it, and it's kind of it's kind of a weird thing. It can be real hard to be an entry fragger, especially when you give the creeks with the CTs. But if you had to pick one, uh, at least from 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 back in the days, that was really really good. Uh, I'd definitely take Rain from Face Clan. And if I had to pick one more, it'd probably be. If you had to look like for like a really diehard interfrag that seems to be doing it all the time, uh, it could be Fur from it might be or maybe Taco. I think one of those two guys are also like in in that category of of always being the first guys uh, hitting the bomb. <laughs> It, it seems like Ace is agreeing. Um, no, it's fine, device. No need to mute because we got the next question for you. What is the best way to stay consistent in game device? And I'm sure it uh, is a question from Satna Gaming. Um, anyway, I'm sure it's related to the fact that you hit top five on the, on the rankings, player rankings, five years in a row. So, how do you do it? Uh, I guess that. Uh... Sometimes you, I guess for me, I never really look at the bigger picture. Like if I have a bad tournament, I'm just focusing on the next tournament. If I, uh, if I'm in a good period, I'm not over valuing my skill. I think just like taking it one tournament at a time, not stressing. I think the toughest period was honestly 2018 in the beginning where we lost at the Boston major and I came back from being uh, sick and, and all of, all of that crap. Uh, so I guess, um, Consistency just comes from having structure in your life, doing the same things in your everyday, um, practicing with your team, doing the things you love to do, um, be happy in, in what you do. I think that's really important. Um, so those are probably my main things. I think that uh, overall it's, it, it's becoming easier with all of the help we get in Astralis from all the psychologists, all the physical trainers, the nutrition, etc. Uh, we, we have a really good opportunity to, to keep being consistent and not think about too many uh, things outside of CS. And, and I'm really grateful for that. Nice. Great answer. Uh, now we got another one. It's a bit more casual. Um, it's about your best memories with other teammates and Sonic. So what are your best memories? Ooh, um, There's I always think... the tournament wins, right? Yeah, sure. Besides, besides tournament wins. Um, is it only had... Sonic? Or... It, it can be with, it can be without. It's just teammates. Uh, Sonic, past and present. Good question. Okay, no good memories. Bucharest uh, in with Bucharest with Kijun and Kerrigan. <laughs> no. I think we'll leave it. Yeah. I think we'll leave it at that. And uh, uh, there's a lot of funny things actually. Me and Glaive, we once went out as well in Atlanta. That was really that was actually one of my funniest moments, but it was also one of the craziest one. Like uh, Glaive woke up on the floor in a different hotel and I was walking home in a ghetto like it was was funny but crazy next day we laughed so much and uh, everyone laughed at us because we just puked all day uh, it was right when we got Glaive and we won won the group stage uh, and we really had to celebrate it back then we actually like went out after it. Now, now we just chill uh, have a good dinner so I guess times yeah. were different back then but it was also different more fun times. different times for sure uh, so good memories, at least, besides winning. Um, then we have one from Owe oh, Willy. Willy, do you think it's harder to get discovered now than it was in two thousand fourteen? No. Nope. I think it's easier, but it's probably hard. I don't know if it's harder. Um, I, think I think you have a lot of tools to be able to be recognized now in terms of 
uh, obviously just grinding it out, facing and making it through to the to each country's pro league or the or what it's called. Yeah, I guess it's pro league. I guess it's called. Uh, and then if you are good enough, you will get it also get invited to the to face the pro league. And 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 from there on, it's just about playing and playing and playing, making new connections and trying out for new teams. And I guess I guess that's how it develops. And I think you didn't have that opportunity for analysis. Okay, we have yeah, a lot same of, for uh, me. Oh, sorry. It is just. Uh... Honestly, back then there was no FPL. You had to play LAN tournaments and go to like LAN tournaments. So I guess it's pretty easy now, but the overall level is also better. So it's probably harder with the opponent you face, right? Yep. Right. Um, we have a lot of people telling you to start streaming again. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I, I, you sent me all of the stream overlay yeah, and yeah. I was setting it up earlier and like I'm looking at the OBS button and I'm like, oh yeah. Uh, I think it's tough, honestly, because we have so long days. We're in the middle of the EPL schedule where we prepare for matches. We practice six hours a day. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on with all of the planning ahead of the tournaments coming. What's what's gonna happen? Uh, nobody really knows. So uh, that's why a lot of players have started streaming because uh, uh, we have we 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 want to. Um, do something we don't want just to sit and chill when we have time off and i think uh, i'm hopeful that i'm gonna press the live button at some point but uh, i'm not gonna promise a anything after EPL. Uh, yeah it's, probably it's... after the group stage uh, honestly and i think there will be a lot of online cs maybe uh, i tweeted yesterday uh, it, it was a pretty good idea one guy um, there was a charity tournament in in another game where they like hit all of the names of all the teams and they had all of the top teams so it was just randomly generated yeah ac yeah, you like that huh yeah he, yeah, uh, he wants you to no. stream yeah so i think uh, yeah for sure it, it will probably happen from me or or maybe matches as well i yeah, think I he's think, uh, think, uh, thinking yeah, about it as well. as well yeah no we, we'll look to set something up and it's actually a good idea with with uh with that the times of, of hiding yeah, and especially in these times. Uh, then we have to do a quick shout out. We've actually gained three subscribers. Uh, thank you, Ferrigno, Ferrigno91, uh, Sirius, uh, and Mika the designer. Sirius Black. Sirius Black. Um, then I found a couple of <coughs> interesting questions. Uh, here is one How was the Turtle Beach commercial with Dr. Disrespect that you did? It was really, it was really funny. I think it was really fun to try something, um, something new out, and actually having to, to work with another um, uh, person or you know, like uh, influencer in in on Counter Strike, but in streaming and esports in general. Uh, you could definitely feel he was, uh, he had tried that before, and he was really good at like acting, and he was it was so funny to feel him stepping in and out of his own character, like talking to the guy behind the actual character and actually talking with Dr. Disrespect was really really interesting. So. It was one of the, the better content things. Is there a huge difference between the character that he plays and, and himself? Like, could you feel that? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, there was a, there was quite a big difference in a positive way. He was a very chill and, and very nice guy in real life. But that, like, obviously, the the doc is a little bit more uh, hectic and everything. But uh, yeah, it was it was definitely easy and nice to, to talk to uh, outside of the, the content as well. Definitely, and it was pretty cool because I think a lot of us were starstruck as well because he's uh, he's a guy that uh, a lot of us watches all of the time, right? Yep. Uh, <laughs> um, wow, there are so many questions. Thank you to all who's watching and uh, all who's asking these questions. How many views do we have? Um, we have 475 right now. You have to thank. I subscribed as well. Can you please say my name? You did. We got yeah. a, another subscriber. Too. Can we have like a whiteboard with write names on here? Are you Soraka? Soraka, that's a champion league. Oh, we can play league. Yeah, but it's not. <coughs> anyway, um, we got a device needs an ace cam on stream then. Ooh. I think honestly, he's just sleeping a lot of the time, so. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, it's not going to be that fun. And when he's not sleeping, he's trying uh, to wreck the house. So, yeah, maybe you'll enjoy that. 
Okay, and then we have a question from our new sub, Suraka, and, and it's actually a question that you have you have answered, but I think it's fair to, to go over it again, all things considered, EPL going on, the, the stream is live right now, you can go and watch uh, right now as you as you listen in on this stream as well, and, and especially after we're done here, go watch EPL uh, right here on Twitch. Uh, anyway, the question is from Suraka, and it is, what do you think happened during the first group match? What went mm -hmm. wrong? And Dupree, you are so awesome, man. Keep up the good work. You're my favorite player. Thank Sorry, you. Guys. Uh, am I going to answer? Yeah, you answered uh, before, yeah, so yeah, I think sure, you answer. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, um, you answer. yeah, sure. Um, so obviously, I don't, I don't feel like we were ready. It felt like we were not ready for, to play an official match. It felt more like we were going into a scrim or going to something that didn't meant the same thing for us. And I think we. We usually very hyped, very um, excited about playing on lands, and obviously not going to Malta influenced something. And I think we we were expecting something different, but it never really happened. And obviously we we played pretty poor as individuals, but also um, as team. And and in that sense, we we didn't play very well. And NIP played a lot better, so they they did they decided to de destroy us, and that's what happened. <laughs> and then uh, we had a really good talk afterwards uh, about expectations and like. How we were supposed to play instead of playing like very loose, we played a little bit more structured and, and wanted to to play a little bit more as a team, and I think that showed really well in in the game against Godson. So that is uh, the approach we're going to take um, uh, moving forward. Cool. And then. Got a oh. Okay. Uh, What's happening? I don't know. Are you a Shekta. You a Shekta. Oh, it's Peter. Um, why aren't you? Why aren't you playing together? Like, why aren't you sitting together and playing in the EPL? Because uh, uh, yeah. it's stupid yeah. to travel in these times. You should and stay at home and you shouldn't... You should stay safe and you should uh, play video games. No, I, honestly, it's just the uh, basic guidelines from, from uh, at least the Danish government. I think the Swedish government is a little bit behind on, on that regard. Um, but uh, to stop uh, the virus from... Um, like getting to more people you just should like we've been basically advised not to for me to travel from stockholm to copenhagen copenhagen stockholm all of the time uh, and same with emil he lives in in another city in denmark which takes some time to 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 go to copenhagen so we're just doing the best from home yes yeah and and, and then just to add on it well the, the basic guidelines that the government ha has pushed out uh uh is also just to, to stay home if you're able to right and yeah and, and we are and you are because esports and, and gaming in general can uh, can be online and thriving online so that's that's fortunate in these times see see okay. uh, how do I... oh yeah i'm trying to uh interpret questions how does it feel to play with a wall and i imagine it's a Ooh. reference to magic yeah it must be because oh, really? ma magic and more uh yeah the yeah, yeah, yeah. or it the song be. or what it's called don't say yeah, that yeah. okay we got a question from guffles one most underrated player in the world in your opinion underrated I want to hear uh, you, Peter, first. I have mine. Myself, probably. No. Um, I don't know. Don't take Most anyone underrated. on our team. Don't take no, anyone. No, I'm not taking anyone. No, no. Most underrated player in the world? Mm. Yep. That's a really good question. Thank you. Or it's not my question, but I picked it. Like, you isn't there that. some player that doesn't get recognized or, or get the praising that he perhaps <clears throat> was supposed to. I, I'm, I'm honestly thinking of a guy like Electronic. I know that you guys are praising him a lot, but but it's- Well, like obviously in, in, in the shadows of Simple, yeah, sure. But then again, at the same time, I feel like he's still he's still getting recognized as one of the best players in the world. So no, I don't feel like it. Uh, I guess I could say maybe a player like Natwine, maybe? Mm-hmm. From uh, Liquid? I mean, he's really, really good. That's a good one. That's a good one. But he, a lot of people are talking about Elish, and a lot of people are talking about Twist and stuff. Uh, no, I have my, I have mine. I'm, I know which one. <laughs> okay. Has to be Breeze, right? 
Yeah, Breeze. he was also one I was thinking about. I think so. I'm gonna say Breeze probably. Okay. No, but then he's getting, but then again, he's also getting love. I feel. Too. I feel like he's. Cirque maybe as well. Anymore. Cirque maybe, but they're yeah, also then. up there, right? I'm gonna say a name now, and you're gonna not. You're gonna Klopsky. be like ah. Klopsky from no. NIP. No. He's really good. Well, yeah, he is good, but no, I wouldn't say. I that. don't think he's. He, I not think yet. honestly, he is one of the close to be one of the best players in Sweden, if not the best. Yeah, well, he's definitely up there, but I still think I, I well, he's really good, but he should probably still have a little bit more time before. I, mean, I don't feel like you could judge him being overrated or underrated right now because he still needs a little bit more. Maybe time, he's not he's even rated. Good. Exactly, that's what I mean. But he is really good. So maybe like maybe a year or half of you, you would say like he's actually really really good, or he's like. So good, or you want to say, yeah, yeah. All right, I think that was a uh, that was uh, a fair answer, a long one. Uh, from Sol Solzi, what's your opinion on being able to buy creeks, AKs, etc., after losing uh, with a with a bomb plant in the first round? Is there if people in this stream right now is playing with creeks? Stop it! It's a horrible weapon, and I do not like it. That's my final answer. Okay, I met. I remember you talking about practicing the Krieg at some point, Peter. I know, but it's really, 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 really sucky. No, I mean I really hate that weapon so much. Don't buy it. Buy it. Don't buy it because it's too good. I think you 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 went away from the question. Yeah, the exactly. question was, how do you feel about it being able to it, buy it in the second it's round? It's an economy question, right? Right? Not yeah, a I, and I guess that it's, uh, especially the creek is kind of imbalanced in second round because it really uh, creates too much space. I think the only real weapon you can uh, counter the creek with is an orb. Uh, and and you can't get that in the second round. And even if you have an orb, you see a lot of orbs get. Uh, you still melted. lose to the creeks. Yeah, <laughs> so, so I guess it's, like that stupid weapon. It's, uh, it's definitely imbalanced a, a bit. I think it was more balanced with the with the AK um, back when that was the meta. But uh, I guess that's why a lot of people are actually just going for the bomb plants and a lot of those T T pistols because. Uh, if you go 1-1 one, one, as a terrorist, you reset the economy of the CTs and they don't get 1,900, they get 1,400 and that's a hard reset and it's a lot more worth than losing the pistol round. So, Dupree, how good is the vice at economy in game? Uh, he's the mathematical genius in the team. <laughs> At least when it comes to Counter Strike economy, I don't know about. Yeah, it, 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 but Counter Strike, Strike economy is pretty pretty good at. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah, because I don't think been people really realize this or know it. Yeah, I've always that, been really bad at math because I always do all the math in my head. So when I got up to a level when you couldn't do it in, in your head, uh, like <laughs> it, it became way too hard for me. <laughs> okay, so that's why you're still good at CS economy. Probably, yeah, it's pretty easy. Okay. Um, let's see if we have any more questions. A lot about the priest's abilities as an entry fragger. Uh, we got the most under. Oh my god, so many questions. Uh, oh yeah, I actually have a follow up question to the Creek one uh, that Peter um, went on about in his rant. If Sonic mentioned something about not buying it because you don't want to give it to the to the CT side. Um, I'm not gonna comment on that. Okay, I'm not even. I think he said on the ESL Pro League stream that uh, yeah. that basically we are not buying it at the moment just to see how it is to play against CTs that don't no, get okay. picks. So it's I not think... stupid anymore. <laughs> no, I think he's spoiling. <laughs> That's why I wasn't gonna reply to it because yeah. <laughs> yeah. usually I always give up the secrets. Uh, yeah, I know. I, yeah, yeah. So it's I have to, to give up secrets, but. In this case, especially after the game, think... uh, the game against Navi, uh, they wrecked us a lot with creeks, and and we had a talk afterwards. And especially, uh, electronic was really good um, uh, in, uh, new with the creeks. So I think it's just it's something we're trying out. I think it's working hella good in practice. Honestly, um, we'll see how it translates into uh, official games. Um, I think some players are affected by it more than others. I think Magic, honestly, is probably one of the best, if not the best, creek player in the world. So of course he's a little bit, uh, uh, he's the one that's most affected. I think Civics also, um, usually you just get used to uh, 
taking stupid duels with the Creek, and I think it uh, it allows uh, people to rely more on team play. Um, and then you can say you're kind of preparing also for when it gets nerfed because I think it's just a matter of time, right? Then you already got all your strategies um, for for AK play, right? Yeah. All right. Um, then we have a question from Levi Johnson uh, for device. How do you stay in shape? Um, honestly, now all of the gyms are closed. Uh, we are quite lucky. We have a gym here in my apartment complex, so I go there uh, and I go for jogs. I think that, uh, uh, what do you say, like not pressuring your body too much with all the stress we, we do is the most important thing. You don't have to be a bodybuilder to be a pro CS gamer. Um, so yeah, I guess that having a balance but being active is, is pretty important. Uh, it could be long walks, uh, it could be going for jogs, it could be going for the gym for half an hour to an hour. I think it's just, uh, it's just, you know, in general, just good to be active and have a healthy lifestyle. All right, good answer. And then we have uh, have one from uh, Ryan Larson. <laughs> he asks if uh, we can see your dog. Ace? I guess he's he's sleeping right now. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Emilia? Cool. Emilia? Cool. Yeah. Emilia? And she has a headset. I, will, I can go find him. Where your yeah, ace? Go, go ahead. Where, where your ace? Oh, I'm coming back. Oh. Oh, there he is. Oh, and there is Emilia. Hello, Emilia. She can't hear. She it. says hello. Oh, thank you. Um. And hi, Ace, of course. Uh, we have uh, a question. <laughs> People are asking if they can borrow your players, like borrow Glaive for tournament. And uh, we have a lot on yeah. players in the world. Brawls is already borrowing us sometimes. Brawls is uh, borrowing uh, you from time to time. Great, great Counter Strike, up and coming Counter Strike team. Brawls, is it pronounced actually? <laughs> um do, 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 do. then we have device oh this guy has been asking all streams and i'll i'll, I'll use it uh it's brainiac why did you switch to stretch from black bars uh oof. That's i'm the switching monitor, monitor setup by the way yeah i think warm. it's uh i'm going a little bit back and forth i think uh, i switched because actually i've been playing 1024 uh, x 768 for uh, yeah as long as i can remember in source as well um hmm. what you do uh, and uh, and then i was just like looking at all what people are playing in csgo and a lot of people are playing 1280 stretch and actually um oh someone is spamming the keyboard <laughs> sorry that's the sound of peter's keyboard okay yeah um uh, I, I switched because actually I had a little bit of problems with my eyes. I was getting like fatigued from having to play on low pixels. So I just switched. I think the first tournament I switched was uh, the Starlight Major in Berlin. And, and that was a really good tournament for me. So um, right now I'm still testing like 1280 in, in black bars because I think stretch goes too fast sometimes. All right. That was a really good answer. Um, and then we'll take one final question. So let's make it a good one. Um, I think this is interesting for a lot of people. So you guys changed your seat positions not that long ago. Uh, Device and Magic used to sit next to each other and now you don't. So uh, yeah. why, did you, why did you swap seats? It's mainly because I smell. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, um, swapping seat positions, I think when you look at a team, the, like, the most uh, ideal positioning is that you have the in-game leader in the middle, because then he's able to see, like, uh, micromanage all his teammates by looking to the left and to the right into, uh, like, what they're actually doing. And uh, in, in that sense, that is what we wanted to do with Glaive. But obviously, we realized, but also what you have to take into consideration is that we pair up in game. So let's say that I have a few different maps where I played alongside Magisk. That could be, uh, let's say, on Train and on Inferno and on Dust Two. I can, uh, I'm not, I'm not, maybe not the player that uses it the most, but I can get a visual advantage by sitting next to him, looking at him, at his monitor, seeing what he's exactly doing in a high pressure situation, or if there's like a specific thing that I want him to do. Uh, 
so in that sense, I think that's the reason why we decided to change it up was that I had more positions playing alongside matches than I had the Zipex and vice versa. So it's pretty much that reason. And then obviously also because I smell. But... Or also the smell part. Yeah. Also um, the smell. Thank you. We, we actually got one, one last question uh, and then uh, the stream will be over. We'll be back, uh, we think, on Saturday, but we'll, of course, uh, uh, come out on social media and, and uh, let you know. Um, it's from that comps dude. Who do we prefer to play? A good uh, team, strategy team, or a team with one or two really great individuals? Like, for example, Navi springs to mind, at least, uh, with, with, uh, with electronic and, and symbol. Um, I feel like we benefit more playing against uh, teams that are more relying on being good as individuals than on a, and, than as a team. Yeah. And then obviously if you have the combination of people being really good individual and playing together good as a team, uh, that's when you get the good teams. Uh, and, and that comes into my mind of, of obviously Navi is doing it right now, but also Liquid has been doing it for a while. And FaZe Clan is also going in the right direction of actually being the team that is making a lot of good decisions as a team, but also not on relying and having to hit their individual shots. All right. Great answer. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, the device. He... <laughs> yeah, I think my mic just turned off. I think it's fine. Mind. We'll uh, we'll say uh, we'll say thank you for uh, for now. Anything you got you want to say to all the people watching and all, all the people out there? This this uh, stream will of course be be available uh, to watch uh, at a later stage as well. Sure. I mean. Thank you guys for tuning in. It was a pleasure having you guys here. I'm not sure this is not going to be the last uh, time you're going to see my beautiful face and my beautiful apartment with my beautiful single lab chair and my okay. beautiful Toby Tets and my astrology shirt sponsored by Jackie Jones. And um, stay safe out there and remember to uh, to stick together in, 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 in a way that, uh, how do you say it? Stick together without being together too much because of the virus and everything. But take care and, and remember not to only focus on yourself. And it's really important that we stay, to, uh, that we keep our positive mindsets going here because it's, uh, it's a thing that requires a lot from, from all of us. So uh, stay positive and love you all. And thank you. Thank you, Peter. And thanks for watching. So we'll be back very, very soon. See you guys.